forfeited any doubts about it staying far. Well, Celtic have been forced into ringing the changes with Yusval Heron out with muscle tightness at the moment. Bobby Petter out with a groin injury, but they have the resources. Nevertheless, three at the back, five across midfield. And up front, Chris Sutton alongside the man, Henrik Larsson, who's seeking his 40th goal of the season tonight. As for Hebs, no Russell Latterby, of course, off an international duty. No Mixu Patalainen either, he's done with the flu. Brebner comes in for Latapi and uh, Lemon for the Finn. Three to back again, five across midfield. That's going to be very important. And I would imagine in goal, Nick Colgan, the Republic of Ireland International, could be thinking he's in for a torrid evening. The referee for tonight, of course, is Stuart Dougal. Well, if Celtic players were watching that Manchester United Arsenal game earlier today, they would have been given a clue about how to go about going for the jugular against formidable opponents and some of your nearest challengers. Uh, that's the way to do it, they might have been told. Uh, as for Hibbs from that game, the supporters might be wondering why Dwight York was playing in it and scored a hat-trick while Stearman Russell Latterby is off on the same sort of duty. Uh, there might be a reason for it. I think it might also reside in the fact that some clubs are more powerful in international football than others. Well, Alec McLeish has had enormous experience in all kinds of uh, international and club football. So I think winning a lot of the challenges so far. Almost got it through, and there was Sutton. Coming in very quickly indeed, it wasn't there, the easiest of balls for Sutton to take at the near post as you'll see now. A little bit of a deflection there, and it was just uh, too far in front of that near post. Not the best ball to play to Lambert that way. Petrov with the shot, the nearest chance of the game so far, with almost 10 minutes gone. Perhaps he rushed it just uh, a little bit here, except that the presence uh, of Sozi didn't help him either. Frenchman coming across his line of vision. Big at. You see, Larson came a little bit deeper there. Thompson really has been driving them in from the left-hand side. Inevitably, up comes Vega. Just over. Colgan had to be very smart to this. Well, in fact, uh, Another corner kick. Down and, uh, well, Larson uh, may not be the, the, the tallest striker anybody's ever seen, but what an amazing leap he has in the air. Always dangerous in that zone. Thompson. Tremendous left foot he has. Sutton tried to lay it off. There he goes on, all the same. And I think Sozi has hurt himself in the process. Ties Jack. Look at the number of Celtic players that came across there, and Sozi might be in serious trouble here. The way he's contorted at the moment suggests knee. Look at the way he twisted round there. This gives you a better idea of it. I think he took. I think Petrov came in there and took his left knee. Seems to be okay. Zatelli. Sozi judged that very well. Just dabbed it forward. Lawson. That's a corner kick. Ah, uh, well, from mistakes like that, disasters can happen for teams, of course. Decided on the in-swinger this time. 
a good looking ball and Larson. That's it. Mjolby put it over. But Larson was a man who got his head to it. So almost halfway through this half, once again, Larson almost invincible in these positions. He gets up to it, even though he was covered, leaving Mjolby with a simple tap over Celtic and leading by one goal to nil. And I think uh, the referee isn't happy with Smith. Well, I'll tell you what it is. I think he has a cut. Which will have to be seen to. Looked on, and again, here's Lehman. It's a decent ball in Vega. Good understanding with a goalkeeper that time. I think if he had gone for it, made a touch, it was going to be difficult for Douglas. Vega. He almost struck Lennon with a the ball there. Well, that's a superb pass through to Petro. Can he put it in? No, he can't. And the Hibs defenders must be asking themselves, superb though that pass was, how on earth was Petro left in that position and he can't even clear the lines now? Well, Alec McLeish, one of the best uh, defenders ever to grace the Scottish turf, must be incensed about that. Useful looking balls at Telly. Yobi did very well there, though. Just played too far. Will he try to get uh, the boot up there, off the chest? Hibbs players were complaining. This is a better phase for Hibbs. Seemed to regain a little bit of composure. Now Smith. It's the final ball like that that's been letting him down as Agat gets an opportunity to clear the lines. There was nobody coming deep from the left there. Split out by Lennon now, Petrov. He has support. Here's Larson. Try to touch it through there, but Sozi reads the game so brilliantly. He was up and out like a flash. O'Neill. Lawson will get this. Not too neat with the pass. Here's O'Neill. Sorry, getting everybody behind the ball at this stage as Matthias Jack makes a run. O'Neill. Lawson coming up for this. He's getting his head in. in. Oh, and the Hibs players inside were screaming at Lawson to head the ball across goal. I mean, it really would have been spectacular had he put it in from this angle. Look at the Hibs players inside, screaming for the pass. Here's Lehman. Well, that was good possession play by Hibs under pressure. You need more of that. Rebner. Ready to, that's a bit of play, Zatelli now. Waited for a run by Lawson on the left. Good interception by Bilby. But that was a much more penetrating move by Hibbs on that occasion. Look at Lawson, he, he took off very late. Now, really, Egat should have been up at him quicker than that. I think uh, it was probably Mjolby who got the final intervention. Neat one, two, here's Vega coming forward. 
Well, that was a difficult ball. There was a deflection. I think it swung in the air. Almost like a, a batsman facing a googly. There's, watch the swerve as it gets on the ball there and almost deceived him. Look at the swing in it. And there goes the halftime whistle. Well, there haven't been all that many chances in the game, but that doesn't matter to Henrik Larsson. He was after his 40th goal tonight. He's not yet got it, but, oh, his name is clearly a, underlining the score there by Mjolby. Trooping off here, Celtic leading by one goal to nil, but uh, it's still very, very close indeed. At the start of this half, I'm quite sure Celtic realised that that third goal of the season for Jorn Mjolby as <laughs> Larson almost got that off uh, that uh, third goal of the season by him is not enough uh, they realised that Hibs were coming back into the game much more strongly in that first half so they cannot rely on a, as close a margin as that in a first half that I must say was very disappointing very few opportunities to score for either side Celtic certainly had the edge of penetration there by Vega nice little flick on there Hibbs looking promising this time O'Neill has to cut back the way though Zatelli gives support and a weak ending by Zatelli they got the corner kick out of that but the ball had to be played in much sooner into the penalty area and the final ball once again and so often in the first half let them down All the big men in for this one. Played low here, Sozi. And again, didn't get hold of it uh, properly the second time. But quite obviously a, a ploy trying to use this man's great strengths at hitting a ball in. He got the accuracy, but uh, no great weight behind the shot. Sozi. Silly ball by Bredner. Really put his side under pressure. It's actually Lovell, I think, who uh, gave that ball away rather carelessly. Might be punished for it. Well, Vega missed it. So did Larson. Indeed, I think Larson may have been put off by this effort by Vega coming storming in here. Certainly stretched out for it. Vega got in there, wasn't all that far away. Zatelli can't get it. Yobi does. Now here's space. Thompson ready. Sutton will let fly. He was. I think inclined back the way as he went for that and as a consequence the ball floats high a little bit of descent there the ball is is uh, going to Hibbs indeed that's a neat little ball put through here Zatelli putting it in where well, Lehman had to go for it, although Brebner was making a run through the middle. Beautifully set up there. This cross, absolutely excellent. And Lehman comes off, and on comes Mark Libra. <laughs> that is played with some of the, the great players, including Sozi. And Papin way back in the, the Marseille days. Experienced player. He was a thought he might play from the start tonight. Well, he got almost got going that time. Larson, that's a great save. 
Larson suddenly got away from captivity. He's been hemmed in so much. Watch him running there. There was an appeal for offside, not given. Sozi, so often in a position like that, to clear the lines. Interception by Lambert. There's a great chance for Lawson. Can't put it away. This time Lovell came across. Hibbs defense once again is getting into a tangle, not running tackles properly. That was a real chance. That 40th goal still eluding him. What a swerve in again, and this time. Sutton was given a clear header. Now, he's been under very careful scrutiny. This time, he managed to get a little bit of freedom, but it wasn't the best of headers. Smith. Well, this is a bizarre defending there by him. I think Vic Alec will be apoplectic about that. Every now and again, they've got themselves into terrible problems of overpassing in, in front of the goal. Thompson. Excellent shot with the right foot this time. Lennon will make sure getting that right away. Finally, they'll be able to get openings again. Rebner. He's turning by Zatelli. Here's Libran with a chance, and he's done it. The Frenchman pulls Hibbs back level. And a little bunch of uh, hip supporters here, absolutely jubilant. Little mistake there, the first one in the game. And as I said, Celtic before the kickoff had not conceded a goal at Parkhead since December 2nd. So Mark Libra coming in there, puts it away. Now, can Celtic come back from this? Remember, they're playing without Sozi. I make it. About seven minutes remaining. The crowd now trying to raise Celtic. Into Lambert. Going across the field, Boyd. That's a very good ball to Thompson, who's been much quieter in the second half. That's more like him. That's a beautiful ball there at the back. As usual, Henrik Larsson with a tremendous jump again. Just watch this man's leap. Didn't look as if he had a nerfy to get anywhere near it. And yet he did get the final touch. That's a poor ball by Thompson. And the final whistle is gone. That is a remarkable comeback by Hibbs in this game. I think many teams might have uh, crumbled given that they were early behind, but they showed great resilience. That goal by Mulby set uh, Celtic up well for the game, but they couldn't capitalize on it. I thought Hibbs had an enormous amount of possession. Again, they didn't have a cutting edge until near the end of the game, and Libra coming in, the new Frenchman in the side, 
giving his support something to cheer and really at the end of the day with Celtic one Hibs one very much a deserved draw and Hibs are still in contention the habit of coming to Celtic Park perhaps going a goal behind and collapsing you didn't this time what made the difference I don't know we, we well we certainly try to get messages for the dugout, not a bottler, please don't bottle her. Um, and I thought the first 25 minutes we did, and we're up until Celtic scored. We'd, but then we, we got a grip of ourselves and started playing. Midfielders started to get tight in Celtic's midfielders. I mean, don't, don't take it in the way for Celtic, they still uh, had, had a massive amounts of possession in the first half, and indeed probably the game, and they, and they were very, very dangerous right to the end. But I thought we played more like ourselves, and there was more belief. Mark, did you enjoy the game? Yes, I'm so very, very happy for me and for my team. For the result, is that, that it's very, uh, very important. One, uh, one, one is competition. Hibs have had a much longer wait.